looks a picture of this, doesn't it? And if anyone's watching this and we're in the depths of winter, hopefully this might trigger some memories of what a fantastic summer we've had. It's the summer that everybody's been after. And they've been after it for years. There's no complaints, certainly in this part of the UK, central Nottinghamshire, about the summer that we've had. We've had plenty of sunshine, very little rain, and once we've got past June, July, and this first part of August continues in the very dry vein, but I must admit, and although I can remember 1976, I can't remember crops like this. This is barley, if I remember right. Very dry barley. We're just into the second week of August as I film this. And I'm filming this now, probably for release or expecting to release the video sometime in the winter when we're all perhaps a bit fed up of the long dark nights and the colder temperatures and the wet and the gloom. Boy, how we could do with some rain now. I've never seen it as dry as this. This is without a doubt the closest we've ever come to conditions that we had in 1976. In some ways I would say that this is worse than 76. Just at the start of another sort of heat wave expected to last at least a week. In fact there's four days coming up where the Met Office have issued warning against the heat. It's warm today, if not hot, but I don't mind it hot. All I think about when it's hot like this is what will it be like in December and January and February? How we will be longing for days like this. It's a good year for the harvest. Some grain size might be small. This looks really good actually, this barley. But the whole ground is just a dust bowl. Cracks in the ground especially with the green line on a clay-based soil. And that clay-based soil stretches pretty much from the A614. That's a very good dividing line between the sandy, stony soil of the Sherwood sandstone areas and the clay-based soils of Ecrin all the way across to the River Trent at Newham. So much has suffered surface-rooted plants especially like grasses have obviously suffered. The trees don't seem too bad. The mature trees seem to have coped all right. But there is quite a lot of dieback and early defoliation showed by a number of trees, especially on free draining soils on the former pit tops that we have here in Nottinghamshire. But we can't really complain. This is the kind of weather and the conditions that everybody's been wanting every year for as long as I can remember. Apart from in 76 and 2022, when all people want now is rain. Yeah, if you live in the northwest of Scotland, you'll have no idea what I'm waffling on about and you won't understand it. They've had all the rain. It is a lovely day. But you can see the problems that nature, especially the invertebrates, have to put up with and withstand this year. Pretty much all the roadside verges locally here in Nottinghamshire are like this. There's a little bit of greenery starting to appear. That on and off bit of rain that we had during the first week of, or the first few days of August has helped a few things. The plants that light with dry conditions seem to be doing okay. But it's the dying off of so many plants 
so many host plants for the, a range of larvae of butterflies and moths that's going to cause the real problem it is nicer as I stand here now there's a couple of common blues flitting around what is effectively just a dry grassy set aside strip there is a clump of bird's foot trefoil it's about 20 feet or so in that direction and that's the saviour for the common blues here but despite the dryness and i don't think the bit of rain that we had in the first few days of august has really contributed to this but Birds with trefoil, such as what you can see in front, seems to be doing better than any other plant that I know of. It's really coming back and having a strong second flush of flowers, and the second flush of flowers equals the first. So anything that's reliant on birds with trefoil as a host plant should do quite well this year. And at the moment, there's quite good numbers of common blues, and they've certainly done quite well. But certainly, in parts of Nottinghamshire, a lot of the low growing plants, such as bird's foot trefoil, got burnt to a cinder. But it has started to make a bit of a comeback in parts. So, as a plant to keep in your garden for those increasingly dry summers that we seem to be getting, bird's foot trefoil might be better than most. It is a great attractant for bees and butterflies and a number of other insects so it's well worth having a plant of in your garden looks a very different scene now we've fast forwarded several months to november there's no evidence whatsoever that we ever had a drought now there's no evidence on the surface that you can see nothing visible here the grass strip which was completely devoid of any greenery apart from that bit of burst or trefoil that i mentioned in the last video is now gone it's beautifully green and all those perennial plants and flowers that are contained within the grass strip behind me are all now flourishing once again hard to imagine how this all was just a matter of months ago the barley crop which was ready for harvesting has now gone and had been replaced by winter wheat never used to get winter wheat years ago even when i was younger it's all a new thing fields were left fallow over the winter and wheat was planted in spring once it warmed up it's just amazing though how nature can make a comeback from such scenes of devastation that we rarely see in the UK in terms of devastation caused through sunshine and heat and lots of it. As I mentioned, not everywhere in the UK was affected in the way that we were here in the central and southeastern parts of England. Northern England they were pretty much drowned out and had more than enough rain. But it's amazing, say, just how things return back to normal. The only evidence that we'll probably have of what a poor year this was and the effects of this poor year will be the number of invertebrates out and about in 2023. I imagine and predict that many species next year will occur in far fewer numbers despite the seemingly potential sort of genocidal effect that the hot weather can have and probably will have had on some species it won't be all completely doom and gloom and some caterpillars some some pupa always manage to survive and pull through it's all quite part of the natural scheme of things really populations of invertebrates vary from year to year anyway it's just that when we get extremes of weather like we had in 2022 those population dynamics and variations tend to be equally as dramatic 
but that all remains to be seen no doubt people will be reported high numbers of certain species that did well and it might be that those spring flying moths and butterflies did particularly well even though it's november and the heat of july and august is gone it's still incredibly mild we've not had even the remote sniff of any cold spell or even a frost yet but that's not unusual in this day and age frosts are becoming increasingly rare or unusual in nottinghamshire should i say but the next few years are going to be interesting for those of us that record invertebrates because numbers are going to be down for many species some species though whose larval stage is probably in early spring and maybe in the autumn may fare better than those whose larvae were active or should have been active in the summer the trouble is many will have been fried the food plants wouldn't have been available because they'd have died and wilted and so the caterpillars of many invertebrates would have starved but it affects a wide range as well so it'd be interesting to see just what species have fared okay certainly two particular leaf miners have done really well stigmella aceris and philonistis saligna are everywhere and have done remarkably well to say that the caterpillars live within a leaf itself and yet those butterflies and moths that lay eggs on those leaves and whose caterpillars rely on those leaves to eat have suffered greatly purple emperor is one a massively poor year for purple emperors here in Sherwood Forest but also a number of other species common blue was doing very poorly but then seemed to have a really good spell in that last sort of half of August I've never seen so many common blues as there were and lots of female I said Lane so common blues next year given a decent winter should be everywhere at your local site but that's what one thing that makes recording invertebrates and wildlife in the UK so interesting it's the UK's weather probably studying the weather in the UK is probably the best place in the world that you could study it because our weather is so different so variable to say we're on the same latitude as Canada and look at their weather and yet because of the jet stream we get this mild weather we're not getting the snows now so as the end of 2022 draws ever closer there's still plenty to look for during the winter months those species that are hibernating and overwintering can still be found and with the winters that we get now are still out on the wing and out and about later in the year but also earlier in the year as well how times have changed for some things not so good I suppose but for other things it's absolutely brilliant for an entomologist climate change in the UK is pretty much a godsend if you look at it from an entomological point of view the new species that are being brought in by the increased sort of temperatures the being higher average temperatures and the higher winter temperatures it's phenomenal ranges of species whole ranges of species are being recorded new to the UK every year some no doubt are being lost but it's all part of the grand scheme of things can we change it I don't know I don't think we can certainly not in my lifetime 